Is it only individuals that are affected or companies in these countries as well? And how are they going to move their money out if they're in that currency world as well? So alternative digital currencies. Companies are composed of individuals, <laughs> unlike what the US Supreme Court says. They are not people. So companies that are made of people will have to, each of the people in that company will have to find ways to take advantage of whatever technology they can get their hands on and move out. Uh, but it is going to be difficult for a lot of companies in this space, and not just in this space. Right now, if you're a gold dealer, if you're selling jewelry, if you're dealing with foreign exchange, if you're selling electronic goods or anything that can be sold and bought for value and barter in any of these economies, uh, you are already in opposition to the great nationalist plan of our esteemed leaders, right? And so you're in trouble. Um, companies are going to have a very difficult time. One of the things I foresee is that we're going to see um, much more development in decentralized forms of trading, peer-to-peer -peer trading, local bitcoins, uh, BitSquare, and other forms like that, the things that can easily go underground when things get really ugly in a country. Just like we see in Venezuela. There is no Venezuelan coin base. It's all person to person, hand to hand, right? Or wheelbarrow to wheelbarrow. So, do you see like, um, like massive financial odds and independent institutions and buildings on these um, blockchain industries that are part of the people that are going to be the ones that are basically away from the other sort of um, system into the system? So, uh, what I mean is like, um, What's going to happen to the exchanges? Are they going to be like, um, they're going to come after the exchanges, obviously. Well, they're going to come after the exchanges, but not too hard. And this is one of the other fun lessons that we've seen play out in China, which is, why have they not shut down the exchanges after 60 valuations? Ask yourself that. First of all, they tried to close their bank accounts, and the exchanges started selling vouchers in grocery stores. So instead of depositing money, you'd buy a voucher, redeem that voucher, and buy Bitcoin at the exchange. They just bypass the banking system completely and use the grocery stores as cash-in mechanisms, which you're going to see happening in lots of other countries. But why have the exchanges not been shut down? The simple answer is that they can somewhat monitor the exchanges. If they shut them down, all of that traffic is simply going to go to exchanges outside the country that will still sell vouchers in the grocery stores of the local economy because people will smuggle in the vouchers. Also, where is the Politburo going to exchange their money? <laughs> they need an exchange too. The whole beauty about this is that the first people who try to get out are the people who wrote the fucking law. 